Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very, very radical equation. And on top of that, it's going to be a nonic equation with the ninth degree. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. Okay, so we do have this equation, x to the power of 9 minus 2022 times x to the third plus the square root of 2021 is equal to 0. And we're supposed to solve for x. Okay, now we're going to be using a very interest, interesting strategy to approach this problem. And that's going to be substitution. But there are also other surprises. Okay, cool. So how do we proceed? Well, you probably noticed that this equation can be turned into, you know, a cubic, so on and so forth. But that's not what I mean by substitution. I'm going to be doing something more interesting than that. Okay, cool. Obviously, that's one way to go, but I'd like to take care of that at the end. So, what am I, what am I going to do? Well, if you look at the terms, the coefficients, you notice that the constant term is the square root of 2021, and which is not a perfect square, as you probably know, because it's just 2021, and, you know, it can be factored into two primes, it's a difference of two squares, uh, so on and so forth, right? It's 43 times 47, so many interesting properties. And the 2022 is one more than the 2021, but one of them is a radical. So how do we approach that? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this number A, okay? And then, so let me write it down. A is going to equal square root of 2021. Now, if I square A, I should be getting what? Oops, I'm out of myself. If I square A, I should be getting 2021, right? And if I add 1 to it, then I should be getting 2022. Awesome. This is the trick, the first trick. Now, what do we do with that one? Well, we can just um, replace everything. Um, so basically, all numbers are being replaced by something A. So it's going to look like x to the ninth power minus. And now 2022 is going to be replaced by A squared plus 1. And then you might be asking, why are we doing this? Right? It looks like we're complicating things. Actually, this is kind of complicating it, but not necessarily complicating it. Plus A, right? Is equal to zero. Okay. At this point, you might be thinking like, can I use the difference of two squares? This, that. Nope, that's not what we're going to do. So this equation is still nonic, which is ninth degree. You can turn it into a cubic, yes, but still not very manageable. We're going to twist this equation around, and that's one of the algebraic tricks that we use, which is very common and which is very cool, I think. You've probably seen this in other videos, some of my other videos. So here's how the trick goes. Since we have a squared and a, this equation can be turned into a quadratic in a. Okay, that's what we're going to do. How do you do that? Let's go ahead and distribute first. Let's see what we have spread it out. So this is what we get from here. Okay. I don't think it's factorable by grouping or anything like that. So we're going to proceed differently. Now, what I'd like to do is I would like to uh, put everything on the right hand side because that's where a squared is positive. So let's go ahead and do that. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to write it a little differently. So this term is going to be x cubed a squared on the right hand side. A is just going to be a minus A on the right-hand side. And everything else uh, is going to be negated, of course. Uh, it's going to be plus X to the third minus X to the ninth. Okay, cool. So now everything is on the right-hand side. But now we arranged it as a quadratic in A. Okay, so what is X then? If A uh, is the variable, X is a constant here. So we're going to treat X as a constant and A as a variable and solve A. And how are we going to solve it? You'll see in a little bit. Let me go ahead and finish this up. So hopefully this makes sense. This is a quadratic in A. And the coefficient of A squared is X cubed, right? So that's the A in the original quadratic, which is AX squared plus BX plus C, because I'm going to use the quadratic formula. I'm about to use the quadratic formula to solve this because this equation is quadratic. Okay, cool. Now here's how it goes. A is equal to negative B. Again, B is the coefficient of A, so it's negative 1. So it's going to be 1 plus minus the square root of B squared. Again, B is 1 here, so B squared is going to be 1 again. 
minus 4ac. When I say a, I mean the coefficient of a squared, which is x cubed, right? 4 times x cubed times c, and c is going to be the constant, which is x cubed minus x to the ninth. Alrighty? Cool. Now, what is so good about doing this is that we can actually solve a or solve for a, but it's not that easy to solve for x. Especially in the ninth degree case, it will be like impossible. Okay, cool. So this is a in terms of x, in other words. But let's go ahead and work it out because this doesn't look as nice. So what is inside the parentheses? Let's distribute this. So it's going to give me negative 4x to the 6th plus 4x to the 12th and all over 2x cubed. Now, look at the expression inside the radical. What does that look like to you? If it doesn't look good, then I'll probably write it this way for you. 4x to the 12th minus 4x to the 6th plus 1. You know that I'm going to erase that, right? x to the 6 plus 1. Okay, does that make sense now? Hopefully, that should ring the bell. If it doesn't, let, let me tell you what it is. Okay, what we have inside the radical is a perfect square. Why? Because 4x to the 12th is 2x to the 6th quantity squared, and 1 is 1 squared, and 4x to the 6th is 2 times 2x to the 6 times 1. So in other words, we have something like a minus b quantity squared. In other words, in other words, what we have inside the radical can be written as 2x to the 6th minus 1 quantity squared. And there you go. Your radical is simplified that way. Now, when you have something squared inside the radical, that means we can just get rid of the square and the square root at the same time because they kind of undo each other and we end up with something nicer. Okay, that's what I meant by nicer. So 1 plus minus, and again, uh, this square root is going to be the absolute value, so on and so forth, but the plus minus takes care of that, so we're good, and we get the following. 2x to the 6th, I don't know what's going on with my 6 powers today. 2x to the 6th minus 1, and that divided by 2x to the 3rd. Okay, cool. Now, this means that we were able to solve for a in terms of x, and remember, this was a quadratic, so we used the quadratic formula. There are two roots with the plus and minus, so now we're going to separate them because we want to simplify this as much as possible and we still haven't achieved the result because our goal is to solve for x and the answer should be numerical, okay? Cool. Now, what am I going to do? Uh, well, I'll, I'll consider the two cases. This is one and this is the other one. One plus, one minus, we're all good. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this. Now, the 1 and the negative 1 cancels out, which leaves us with a really nice expression because the 2 cancels out. x to the 6th divided by x to the 3rd is just going to be x to the 3rd. So everything looks good here. Fairly simple, right? The second one. The second one is going to look like a little different. Uh, it's going to be 1 minus 2x to the 6th plus 1 divided by 2x cubed. All I can do here is basically write it like this and then simplify because the only thing I can do is divide by 2 and if I do the other solution is going to be 1 minus x to the 6 divided by x to the third great so these are my solutions but but they are the a values and I don't want a values I want x values so what am I supposed to do well you can just look at it from the x's perspective and uh, set x as a variable and a as a constant. So you kind of switch roles. That's the cool thing about this type of manipulation. And you can do that. Yes, that's legitimate. Uh, we can go ahead and write it this way. x cubed is equal to a, meaning that from here I find the x value, right? So x is going to equal the cube root of a. Let's leave it at that for now because when, when I'm done with the second one, I'll put it all together and write the solutions. Cool? Okay, so that can wait. For the second one, I can cross multiply, so it's going to give me a x cubed is equal to 1 minus x to the 6th. To make it more meaningful, put the negative x to the 6th on the left hand side, and that should look like x to the 6th plus a x to the 3rd minus 1 is equal to 0. Obviously, at the beginning, if you set that x cubed is equal to something, then you wouldn't have to deal with the nonic this way or the, you know, 6th power you could do it as a quadratic directly, but we're going to do it at this point. It doesn't really matter how. 
or when, but this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to replace x cubed with another variable. Let's call that y. How about that? Not always you, right? Okay, it's not always about you. Cool. So now this is going to look like y squared plus ay minus 1 is equal to 0. As you can see, this equation turned into a quadratic, but of course we had to do a lot of manipulations and so on and so forth, and then we ended up with a quadratic equation. But what's really cool about it is that if we can solve for y, then we can solve for x, so we're going to achieve our goal. Okay? So how do you solve this? Well, quadratic formula is your best friend, negative a plus minus the square root of b squared, which is a squared, minus 4ac is positive 4 here because c is negative 1, divided by 2 times a, which is 2. a is not the same a, you know, a is the coefficient of y squared. So, yep, cause a lot of, some confusion here. Maybe I should use a different variable, not a, all right? Anyways, so this is the result we got, but notice that y is equal to x cubed, so this is x cubed. Wow, amazing, right? Well, not necessarily, but yep, it's the result. So since this is x cubed, x is going to equal the cube root of these. But there are two values because it's because of the plus minus, obviously, right? So I'm going to do x equals the cube root of negative a plus the square root of a squared plus 4 over 2. This is going to be one of my solutions. The other solution in terms of a is going to look like the cube root of negative a minus the square root of a squared plus 4 over 2. Now, you might be saying, like, can we have a negative expression inside? Yes, because this is cube root. It's not okay with the square roots, not with the fourth roots, but it's okay with the odd roots. Okay, so these are my values. I got three values. Uh, the third one is x equals cube root of a. Let me bring that over here as well. Make a copy. So these are my solutions, right? So I got three solutions even though that's kind of like a nonic equation, but it could be turned into a cubic, remember? And cubic equation is supposed to have three equations, um, three solutions. Um, well, why are they uh, that way? Because uh, when you cube roots a number, it's basically unique, right? It's not like the square root or when you... There's only one number whose cube is give a given number, in other words. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but I, th I hope you get the idea. Okay, so... Anyways, so these are all the solutions. That's what I was trying to say, I guess. And, uh, but that's not final because we still have to n numericalize this, right? Or n how do you make it numbers? Okay, not A. So we want the numerical values. So how do you do that? Well, you're going to replace. So you have to back substitute. And remember that A is equal to the square root of 2021. So you're going to go ahead and back substitute. And we're going to be getting the values from here. Let's see what they look like. One of the values is going to be the cube root of the square root of something. That means the sixth root of 2021. It's kind of like our simplest looking solution. Another one is going to look like the cube root of, okay, negative a. Negative a is going to be this number here, the opposite of that number. Plus, if you square a, you get 2021. And then if you add 4 to it, you get 2025, which is actually... 45 squared. Isn't that cool? Yep, that's so cool. Yes, it becomes 45. Nice. And then divide by 2. So I'll, finally, we get an integer. You got to remember that. That's why I said it's difference of 2 squares because 45 squared minus 2 squared is equal to 2021. That's how we were able to um, factor it uh, as a product of 2 primes. In other words, it's one directional. If you can write a number as a product of 2 primes, 2 distinct primes, then it means it's a difference of 2 squares. You can think about that. So the third one is going to be the, pretty much the same thing. You just got to put a minus sign there, and it's okay to do that. Negative 2,000 square root of 2,021 minus 45 divided by 2. And this basically concludes our video. These are all the solutions. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. And guess what? It's going to be a geometry puzzle. See you there. Take care. Bye-bye.